Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. Glad you could join me tonight. Tonight we are going to be doing a rye battle. This rye battle I'm pretty excited about because we're pairing two relatively expensive and hard to find ryes against two well thought of good ryes that maybe are a little less expensive, maybe a little easier to find. I wanna try these in a four way blind, so it is what it is. Now what we have here is we have Redwood Empire Emerald Giant. This is a really, really good rye. It runs right around 40, $45 coming out of California. It comes in at 90 proof. And to me, this is probably the second best of the regular Redwood Empire line. I like the Lost Monarch a little bit better. And I think this is better than Pipe Dream, but Redwood Empire decided to release a special thing this year, and this is called Rocket Top, and it is their own distillate, but it's a six year bottled in bond. But I have had this before. I actually drank some of this on Christmas day, and it's actually really, really good. I quite highly enjoy this one. And uh, here we have E.H. Taylor straight rye, obviously bottled in bond, coming in at 100 proof. And this one is really pretty darn good too. This did really, really well in my rye bracket last year. And I am excited to have this in the pairing, uh, in the grouping today. And last up tonight is the Buffalo Trace straight rye recipe coming in at 94 proof. So you essentially have 200 proof bottled in bonds and you have two, you know, 90, 94 proof. So a little underproofed on these ones versus these ones. Now I kind of thought this was an interesting battle because you have the, essentially the little brother, the less expensive, more commonly available. And then the big brother, which is more expensive and very hard to find at this point because it was kind of a special release. This one is incredibly hard to find. I've never seen it other than the one place I saw it when I actually spent the money to buy it. And then this is actually fairly hard to find as well. Uh, you can sometimes find them, but uh, when you do, a lot of times you have to pay some secondary markup. Not as much as this, but it's still not cheap. This one's kosher, it's got different rules it has to follow. This one's bottled in bond, it has different rules it has to follow. So I just think this was an interesting group tonight, so I'm excited. Let's go ahead and get these poured and we'll jump right into the competition. All right, these are sufficiently mixed up. I don't know which is which, I'm excited. Let's dive right into them. Now this has a nice warming caramel on it, which is kind of unique. Guys, just a very faint bit of rye spice, not much, but just a little bit. And it smells almost kind of grainish. It has a little bit of kind of a soft grain in there too. It smells good though. So that has a really nice mouthfeel, a good herbalness. It has a very uh, kind of a spearmint kind of flavor to it, just a little bit. It's not piney though. It's it's really kind of just a nice little bit of a mint with caramel, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of some baking spice, maybe a rye spice. It has a really nice mouthfeel, good proof. That That's a very, very good rye. This is a tasty, tasty rye. The nose on this one has a nice kind of buttery caramel, a little bit of a kind of a fresh, uh, almost a fresh lemon zest. Very, very faint. It's it, it, it like the other one, it kind of has this kind of warming character about it on the nose. That's really, really nice. So this one is a little bit fresher in the palate. The other one had a, a little bit kind of a more softness, a little more dense sweetness. This one is really good though too. A little bit of a lemon, kind of a citrus thing going on. Getting a hint of a kind of a fresh pine. It's got a really good mouthfeel, a good, you know, a nice coating mouthfeel. It's got a good finish. The finish kind of flavor wise dies early, but the, the actual like feeling it has this very like thick viscous thing that I still feel all over the inside of my mouth. It's, it's quite good as well. The nose on this one, I'm getting a little bit more pine, a little kind of a, a pine with some mint, a hint of rice spice. And the sweetness is kind of a vanilla cream. No, kind of just a plain vanilla sweetness. This one is not as smooth as the first two. It has a little bit of a pine to it on the palate. It also has kind of a, of a lemon zest too. It's kind of pine with some lemon, kind of like a pine salt almost, like a little bit of that going on. It's not bad at all. I mean, it just has kind of a fresh, kind of a fresh pine, fresh lemony pine to it. It has a good mouthfeel though. The finish is pretty solid. Good, uh, some nice, real, a really nice kind of caramel sweetness to it though, that really lingers for a long time on this one. The nose on this one has kind of a very soft caramel, touch of vanilla, a little bit of a pine, a little bit of a lemon. They all have very, very similar noses. The, there's not a whole lot of difference between these. Obviously the two Buffalo trays should be fairly similar palette and, and nose wise, just similar mash bill 
or same mash bill. And then the two Redwood Empires, I mean, it's the same brand, but the, the Rocket Top is, you know, their own distillate, whereas the uh, Emerald Giant is sourced or at least partially sourced. So there's a little bit of difference there, but still, these are all fairly similar. Um, and I know they're rye, but you know, I do get a lot of variation in rye flavors normally, but these four all seem very, very similar to me. So it kind of punches you a mouth. <clears throat> so this one kind of punches you in the mouth a little bit at the beginning with a little bit of proof, but then it's got this really kind of a nice, little bit of a pine, but this really rich caramel all throughout on this one. But it has this really lemony bite to it. It's just kind of all over the place. It's, it has a lemony bite up the front. It's got a good finish. It's got a really kind of a nice smooth caramel, but then you get like kind of almost like an, uh, a tea flavor to it. The others I didn't get that on. And I get a little bit of a pine, a little bit of a harshness. So this one is not as smooth. I will say that this one is less smooth than the other three, uh, but it's still pretty good. Okay, we've gone through them once. So uh, I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna try these figure out the rankings, and when we come back, we're gonna put them right on the podiums. Well, that was kind of weird, because when I went through the tastings, it turns out that they're already in the right order. <laughs> so let's let's dive right into them. In fourth place, this one. Third place, this one. Second place, this one. And first place, this one. I will say that these two seem to be a little bit lagging behind the other two, and then these two I thought were a little bit better. These two were really kind of neck and neck. This was a, a little bit more kind of a caramel um, sweet rye, and this was a little bit fresher and I think better balanced, better representative of rye, but just barely. It was pretty close. And then these two were kind of the same thing. This was a little bit fresher, a little more traditional rye, and this had a little bit more kind of caramel, and then it had that interesting uh, pear or like a like a soft red apple thing going on that I started to pick up through the tasting. So it was a good competition, though. I definitely will say that these were all four pretty darn good ryes, and you could pick up any of these four bottles, and it would probably be a pretty darn good bottle for you to enjoy. Now, obviously, some of these are harder to find than others, so let's find out the rankings and see if any of the more easily available, cheaper bottles are on top or if they're the bottom two. <laughs> All right, we've got our bottles here on the table. So let's see what number four is. Number four is Buffalo Trace Kosher Rye. So this is pretty darn good. If you can get that for $40, I would recommend you get that because that's a darn good bottle at $40. And if you have to pay secondary prices and you're getting 60s, 70s, 80s, Maybe a little questionable. $60, I think this is worth $60 any day. $70, starting to get on the fence there. $80, I think you're probably out of bounds on, on the value on this one. Number three, Redwood Empire Emerald Giant. So the two cheaper bottles did come in third and fourth place, but not by a lot. Like I said, there was a distinction. I will own there was a, a distinction between the less expensive and the more expensive, but it wasn't as dramatic as I would have maybe thought. So let's see what number two is. Redwood Empire Rocket Top. So in second place is the Redwood Empire Rocket Top bottled and bond. I will say this, Redwood Empire, you guys did a great job on this. I'm really excited to see what you guys continue to do with your own distillate because this is a great representation of a six year rye. So I'm giving it two, two whiskey row thumbs up. Now in first place, that should be the E.H. Taylor. It is the E.H. Taylor Straight Rye. Now what I want to do is see the differences between this one and this one. So to me, the E.H. Taylor has a little bit more caramel presence, a little more vanilla, a little more oakiness, a little softer kind of feel. The Buffalo Trace is a little bit, the kosher rye is a little more uh, springy, if that makes any sense, a little more piney. Not in a bad way, but it just has a little bit more of that young rye presence than the E.H. Taylor. Now let's try the two Redwood Empires and see how they are. We're going to try the bottled and bond first. They taste quite a bit different. The, the Rocket Top has a lot more kind of dark, earthy, caramels, rich kind of thing going on. The Emerald Giant is a little bit, tastes a little younger. I don't know age-wise how old the Emerald Giant is, but... It tastes a little bit more fresh rye, a little lighter. And so, and they don't taste as similar as these two do. All right, that is the competition for tonight. I am excited by this because one, I've got four ryes that are really, really good. And I would highly recommend if you are looking for a good rye whiskey, all four of these are good ones. 
prices that I'd pay. I think I paid 110 for this in New York. I paid uh, 99 or 100 for this. Uh, pretty much retail, but then I had to pay for shipping from California. Somebody was gracious enough to get that for me out in California. I think I got this one in Maryland at retail, and then I got this one uh, from uh, one of you great people out there on in the YouTube world as well. And it was uh, pretty much, I think I paid right about retail plus shipping. So uh, most of these were fairly reasonably priced as I got them, and at those prices I would get them again. For the E.H. Taylor Straight Rye, I think the most that I would pay out of pocket would probably be around 125 for the first bottle, if I've never had it before and I was dying to get 100, 125, uh, to get more bottles of this, I'd probably spend right around 100. I think the value is there. This one, 100 is, a, I think, the right price for this. I know that it's their own distillate. They needed to make money on it. So they, it is priced high for a six year eye. When you can get a, a, you know, a Russell's Reserve six year for you know, 45, 50 bucks or a Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye for right around 60 bucks. I'm not exactly sure how they would compare, but I think they would fare pretty well in this competition tonight. So there's definitely some good ryes out there that you can get for much more reasonable than these two that are probably pretty comparable. Obviously I don't have them in the blind, so I could be wrong talking about my butt a little bit, but I think it's pretty safe to say that these are in the same ballpark as some of those nice $60, $70 ryes that you could get. To me, this one is, is priced right, right around $40. Maybe you could go 50 on this one. Uh, this to me would be comparable with like a Pikesville rye if you're, if you're a fan of that one. Uh, it's fairly similar. This one's a little less expensive, but but value wise, I'm not a huge Pikes, Pikesville rye fan. So to me, the value would be about the same as that. So I could probably go up to 50 or maybe maybe 60 on this one. And this one, again, I would, I would pay $40 for this one any day, uh, maybe 50 bucks. I wouldn't go up to 80 on this one, but again, it was pretty solid. So you know, I don't regret getting, I'm happy I did, but that is our competition for tonight. But until next time, find a bottle you love.